Nothing too serious. Um, so, so she's been sick, like just stuffy nose, runny nose, cold, sinus infections, her entire life. She's, she's allergic to tons of stuff. She's like always stuffed up, just like always. And so, you know, she's gone to the doctors a million times, and you know, you're treating the symptoms. It says, you know, try this cream, this nasal spray, these drops, this medicine. It tastes so much medicine. It's all this, all this stuff. But an interesting thing happened when they finally said, hey, you should go to an ENT. I'm like, that sounds like a great idea. So we go to the ENT and they stick the scope down. You guys know what an ENT is? Uh, ear, nose, and throat. Throat. Oh, ear, nose, and throat specialist. Oh, yeah. Special yeah. Yeah. Nurse. yeah, so they stick these two, two of her nose and look around. All of a sudden they're like, oh, well, her adenoids are you know, enlarged and she's in 90% blocked. And I'm like, that's great to know. Two years later. Yeah. And so she hasn't been able to breathe out of her nose her entire life you know, uh -huh. so far. Because right. you think 90% plus you're stuffed up, it means 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Um, so if you look at that situation, so she got them taken out. Uh, that was taken out. It's not a big deal. And that was, yes, it was yesterday. So you can treat the symptoms with all these different things, but until you go internal, until you look inside and figure out what's actually actually causing the problem, you're you're just chasing your tail. Like you're not you're not ever going to actually solve anything and, and get it. And so it, it really continues our discussion on awareness, because until we figure out who we really are also plays into the discussion during lunch, the difference between who we say we are and the difference between who we pretend to be or who we act like we are or who we're supposed to be even at times, the difference between that and who we really are. And there's fear in that, in that reality exposing ourselves even to ourselves, <laughs> um, certainly. And there's uh, pressure that can be caused by ultimately coming to grips with reality. Because for many of us, you believe who you said who you said you are. For so long, do you think that's actually who you are? <laughs> but but it's not. And, and when and when there's that gap, like we talked about in the book, when there's that gap between who you say you are and who you really are, that's what causes so much pressure. Because over years of years of years of pretending to be one thing but being completely another, you feel like you can't go back. I can't now become this person, or I can't now expose and be this real person when I've pretended to be this for 25 years, 15 years, 5 years, however long. But until you do, there's literally no exit strategy. But there's no finish line, there's no... Um, there's no CRM or organizational material that can get it organized for you. Yeah, there's no pot at the end of the rainbow when the rainbow doesn't exist. finally realized what the problem was and we realized that these adenoids were blocking her capacity to breathe and so if we think about it in our own lives we have to figure out what's blocking our capacity because we all have capacity mental capacity we all have 
you call it capacity, but you might as well call it potential. And the reality is, the majority of the world, the majority of us, are operating at 30, 40 percent of our capacity. And so why is that? Uh, it's all these things that we're allowing into our life to distract us, to, uh, it's the, the, these things that we continue to let cause that chaos, like we talked about earlier. So we allow all these things to just steal from us. And those things could be valuable things, like helping other people. Helping other people is great unless it's stealing from you. And sometimes you have to be selfish to be selfless, which is a very complex thing to wrap your head around in the beginning, but then when you start living it out, you're like, oh, <laughs> I get it. I can't pour from an empty glass. And how am I really helping these first responders if I'm walking here, if I'm walking into the room with nothing left. thinking about it as capacity, I started guarding the capacity. And we talk about you know, fleeing from negativity. And when you start thinking about your capacity as, you know, okay, you've got 100% and these things that are stealing from it, you start thinking that like, like overly serious to where you're, you're it's like, becomes life and death to you. And that's the way I look at it. It's like, if I allow a negative person any amount of time around me, that they are literally like stealing, just ruining, destroying opportunity for me to do what I'm supposed to do because they're taking away that capacity. guys hope you enjoyed a little behind the scenes look at our recent leadership training and boot camp training that took place last week uh, that discussion that, that I was giving uh, was a part of a little panel discussion amongst the leaders of one of our insurance agencies and you got to look at uh, a lot of the different events that go on throughout our boot camps with dinners and um, banquets and, and things like that. It's, um, it's a really incredible culture that we've built uh, here within our organization. And when people get to see it for the first time at those boot camps, their eyes are opened and everything becomes real. Um, and the last footage you got to see at one of the dinners, we decided, hey, it's I don't know, 30 degrees outside. Why don't we go jump in the pool and uh, see who can stay in the longest. So we did a little polar bear plunge and some Wim Hof breathing and uh, got a little weird and a little bit cold. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of My Living Legacy. Cannot wait to come back to you next week.